Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. Before starting, we would like to specially thank RJ, Brother Calzone, Maraxis and V for supporting the channel on Patreon for one year now. And to celebrate, this week we received V to play with us. Elder brought his take on Omnath Locus of Creation, Food Chain. David is piloting Pongo Skinan, House of Mirrors. Baal did a decade throwback at Sharum combo. And our guest of honor, V, brought his iteration of Arden and Tana's stacks. Elder is going first and Emulgan once, finding a crazy fast hand, with a Polluted Delta, Verdant Catacombs and Volcanic Island for lands, Mox Diamond, Mana Crypt and Carpet of Flowers for ramp, with a Recruiter of the Guard to pivot his game plan. David kept his first 7 with a Flooded Strand and City of Brass for lands, Carpet of Flowers and Elvish Mystic as ramp, Moon Silver Key can find Basalt Monolith to generate infinite generic mana with Kinan, and Stonework Pack Beast filters all that mana into colored mana, to loop Kinan and win with the help of Luster Storm. Bal kept his first 7 happy enough with a single Scrubland, relying on a Lotus Petal and Jewel Lotus for ramp, and hopefully a not too late Mystic Remora to get into the game, dove in's V2 and Force of Will for interaction and Mystical Tutor to pivot his options. Lastly, V Mulligan once and found an Ari Mesa and Bountiful Promenade for lands, with a Soul Ring for ramp. Draneth Magistrate might come into play a bit too late, but that's just how turn order goes sometimes. Paladin class works as protection on his own turn, but as a finisher as well, when his board is packed with 8 bears. Speaking of 8 bears, Archon of Valor's Reach is quite a big one, and Domri and Arc of Bolas not only ramps into uncounterable creatures, but it also helps remove some pesky creatures from an opponent laying around. Ready for this match? Heller starts the game with a Lotus Petal, he follows it with a Mox Diamond, discarding a Volcanic Island. He's not done yet, casting a Mana Crypt, and the table asks if he has a land, and he plays a Verdant Catacombs, which he proceeds to crack for a Savannah, and still casts his Recruiter of the Guard, entering and triggering. He wonders he could go for a combo piece, but he would rather find a Sarah Ascendant to maintain some early pressure on the board. He does cast it, but Paul responds with a Force of Will, taking some time to decide what to pitch, and ends up exiling Dovin's Veto, since the table is mostly creature heavy, and Mystical Tutor might serve as a way out. Being the only black deck on the field, Balfir being spanked early on before having anything to do in this game. We're on the Vid's turn and he plays a Flooded Strand, cracking it for a Tropical Island, and casts an Elvish Mystic before passing. Bal gets to his turn, plays a Scrubland, followed by a Lotus Petal, and Jeweled Lotus as well, avoiding stack species from V. He still casts Mystic Remora and passes with 2 in hand. V plays an Iron Mesa, cracking it for a Plateau. He casts a Soul Ring, triggering Remora and being unable to pay, before shipping it back to Elder. He untaps and rolls for the creep, winning it. He plays a Polluted Delta and cracks it for a Tropical Island. He attacks Baal for 1 and on its second main phase he casts his commander, Omnath Locus of Creation. It enters, triggering and he draws a card, passing afterwards. David draws and plays a Wooded Foothills, cracking it for an untapped Breeding Pool, paying 2. He casts a Carpet of Flowers, triggering Remora and not paying, and it resolves, so he proceeds to his second main phase, triggering it and adding 1 blue to cast his commander, Keenan Bronder Prodigy, and passes the turn. Bal pays for his Remora to stick. He simply plays a Polluted Delta and passes. V plays a Bountiful Promenade and goes for his Drenith Magistrate, which did come a little bit late, but it still stops food chain shenanigans. We're back to Elder and he once again wins his crit roll. He draws and plays an Arid Mesa, triggering Omnath and gaining 4 life. He casts a Carpet of Flowers, triggering Remora, and in response he cracks his Arid Mesa, finding a Tundra, triggering Omnath once again, adding 4 colors, and using that mana to pay for the fish. He then goes to combat, attacking V with Omnath, since Drenith stops his game plan, and the recruiter goes towards Baal. Both players take the damage, and without much else to do, he simply passes. David gets to his turn and adds double blue from his carpet. He plays a City of Brass and goes ahead casting Basalt Monolith. Remora triggers and he doesn't pay, so Baal draws a card. He then asks the table if they can somehow feed the fish, as he has a mystical tutor that could find a force of negation, but he lacks the blue card to pitch to it. This way, Elder goes ahead and casts a Worldly Tutor, triggering Remora, and in response, Bal cracks his Polluted Delta to find an Underground Sea, and still in response, he casts his Mystical Tutor. However, David is ready and responds with a Fluster Storm, dividing two Fluster copies at each spell, and triggering Remora once again. Bal draws but finds nothing, and Mystical Tutor is countered, and then Elder does pay two to be able to resolve his own Tutor. Bal draws from Dead Other Remora trigger, and Elder searches for a Collector Oof hoping David is not able to win on the spot right now. Basalt then resolves and he taps it for 4 generic mana, and attempts to untap it, paying 3, showing a loop where he can generate this way infinite generic mana, thanks to Kinan's ability to add 1 extra mana from the monolith. 
with the infinite generic mana he casts Stonework Pack Beast, which allows him to filter his infinite generic mana into colored mana, in order to activate Kinan as much times as he wants, until he is able to find a Thrasius Triton hero and some more creatures, and he finishes his opponents with a huge finale of devastation. GG. Being such a short match, we decided to shuffle up and play another one. This time, Bal won the dice roll and we mulligan once, finding a single command tower, but with a mana crypt for ramp. Sword of the Meek is part of a backup combo in his list, and Oswald is a nice new addition to artifact-centric strategies. Chain of Vapor and Swan Song for interaction and Imperial Seal to pivot his game plan. V kept his first hand, and quite a good one for this pod. Arid Mesa, Marsh Flats and Mana Confluence for lands, with a Null Rod that is great at stopping Kina and some of Sharon's stuff. Paladin class found its way back again, Esper Sentinel for card draw and Swords to Plowshares for interaction. Elder Mulligan once and found an Arid Mesa and Flooded Strand for lands, Finhorn Elves for Ramp and Ragavan Nimble Pilferer as well, since some like to call it the Red Birds of Paradise. Esper Sentinel for card draw as well, and Mystical and Enlightened Tutor can find him Food Chain and a possible Creature Tutor to win. Lastly, David also mulligan once, finding a lucky Gemstone Caverns, Rejuvenating Springs and Misty Rainforest for lands. Arkham's Astrolabe and Brainstorm for card draw, Veil of Summer for protection and Fabricate to find him Basalt Monolith. Ready for round 2? Before the game starts, David puts Gemstone Caverns into play, exiling Arkham's Astrolabe. Bal then starts his turn, playing Command Tower and casting Imperial Seal right away. He ponders on Drenith Magistrate but ends up going for his main plan, Ristic Study. He still casts Mana Crypt and follows it with Sword of the Meek before passing. V goes ahead, playing a Marsh Flats, cracking it for his Savannah and casting Esper Sentinel before passing. Elder gets to his turn, plays an Arid Mesa and cracks it for his Savannah, not original at all. He mimics V with an Esper Sentinel as well and passes. David plays a Misty Rainforest and passes fully untapped. Bal rolls and takes free from his crypt. He draws and he is said that David, being last, might take on the police role in this game. With that in mind, he fears casting his Rhystic Study, but feels he can't just timewalk himself and goes for it. Both Sentinels trigger and he can't pay. David then calls for a response and Bal is expecting the duck, but it's a brainstorm, triggering both Sentinels once again and not paying. David draws some juicy stuff but lets it resolve, so Bal passes. V plays an Arin Mesa and cracks it for a plateau. He then casts his Null Rod, triggering Sentinel and Rhystic and unable to pay. It does resolve so he then goes to combat and attacks Bal before passing. Elder plays a Flooded Strand and cracks it for a Volcanic Island. He then casts Ragavan Nimble Pilferer, trading Rhystic and pondering on it, but decides not to pay in order to also cast his Finnord Elves, sadly triggering Rhystic again, but setting himself up mana-wise. He then attacks Baal with Sentinel and passes the turn. David goes ahead to his turn, not cracking the fetch. He plays a Rejuvenating Springs and then casts a Sol Ring. People remind him of Null Rod and two Esper Sentinels and a Rhystic but he says he is aware of his play, which hints his opponents he might have removal for Null Rod at the ready. We're back at Bal and he wins the Crypt Roll this time. He plays a Mana Confluence and then casts a Disciple of the Vault. After some thinking, Bal goes ahead and casts a Chrome Mox, triggering both Sentinels and not paying, hoping to deter David's intentions of getting rid of Null Rod. Still with the same blue cards in hand, Bal imprints the Swan Song in order to have Shane available. He passes and V now plays a pretty wooded Bastion. He floats double green with it and casts an Elvish Mystic, triggering Rhystic and paying for it. He then goes to his end step and discards a landed cleanup. Elder gets to his turn and is prepared to attack Bal, but they remind him that David's top card is still known to him, so he either loses it or shuffles it away with a fetch. This way, Elder does attack David with Ragavan, and David instantly cracks the Misty Rainforest. He didn't quite want the card on top, but he also didn't want Elder to have it, so he searches for a tropical island and takes two damage, and Elder creates a treasure and reveals a Gitaxian Probe, which he casts in his second main phase, targeting Ball and triggering Rhystic and Sentinel, and not paying for both. He sees some interaction that would stop his food chain in hand, so he just plays a Windswept Heath and cracks it for a Tundra, and proceeds to cast a Grand Abolisher, triggering Rhystic Study and David opens the social stack, since his window to remove the Null Rod in order to go off would be before Abolisher hits the board, but at the same time doing so would free Helder's treasure and providing him the necessary 3 mana for Food Chain, so he passes on that and Bal draws but passes priority as well. V has nothing as well and Abolisher hits the field, however Elder is short on mana and passes as well. David's options are now slim, as his removal is not what the table thinks it is. No Chain of Vapor nor Nature's Claim, it is a Resculpt that can't hit Food Chain, so he goes for the greedy play, casting Kinan Bonder Prodigy. Rhystic triggers and after some thought, he doesn't pay, and then he passes. 
On his end step, Bal goes ahead and casts a Swords to Plowshares on Elder's Grand Abolisher, triggering both Sentinels, and since he's out of mana, Elder responds to the triggers with a Mystical Tutor, triggering Rhystic and V's Sentinel, and Elder pays for Bal's Rhystic not to draw. V draws and then Elder searches for a mental misstep to the top, so Bal asks the Vid if he wants to get rid of Null Rod now, so Bal could still pay for the Esper trigger, but the Vid says no. Elder then draws and casts the mental misstep, triggering Rhystic once again and unable to pay. Bal draws but finds no answers, so a Bal share is saved and V draws from his Sentinel trigger before Bal goes to his turn. He rolls and once again wins his script roll. He plays a silent clearing and goes ahead casting Chain of Vapor on Null Rod, triggering both Sentinels and not paying, as he says that he is about to deal with the Abolisher. The chain resolves and as V is openly thinking about whether he wants to copy it or save his mana, Bal goes ahead and tells him his next play is a Wrath, so that V can count on his dark next turn. So V decides not to copy it, as he still has Swords in hand to have for interaction as well as Null Rod. Bal then casts an Overloaded Damn to destroy the whole board. It resolves triggering Disciple of the Vault twice, from the two Sentinels, and Baltar's Elder with them to have him closer to Sarah's Ascendant's threshold. He passes and V gets to his turn. He plays an untapped Temple Garden, paying 2 life, and then casts Null Rod, triggering Rhystic Study and Elder responds to it, cracking his treasure and casting his Enlightened Tutor, triggering Rhystic and unable to pay. However, Bal responds with his Flusterstorm, as he's about to lose access to the Mox. He draws and Null Rod resolves. V then brings out some stacks for Elder, an Aetherson Cannonist, triggering Rhystic and unable to pay. He proceeds to clean up, discarding 3 and we're back at Elder. He is now stopped on his food chain plan, so he starts with the Valakut Awakening, triggering Rhystic and unable to pay. It resolves and he puts 5 cards on the bottom of his library and draws 6. He then plays a Command Tower and passes to the Vid. He simply plays a Snow Covered Island and passes fully untapped. Val untaps and takes 3 from the Crypt. He plays an Academy Ruins and then casts Draneth Magistrate, now hitting the board without any commanders. He goes to clean up and discards a useless Talisman before V's turn. V plays a Mana Confluence and after some consideration casts a Green Sand Zenith, X equals 2, triggering Rhystic and paying for it. It resolves and he searches for a Collector Oof, for extra safety from the V's possible interaction. He attacks Elder for 2 and then passes. We're back at Elder and he plays a Plateau, into a sad little Sarah Ascendant. Rhystic triggers and he pays for it, before passing the turn. David is also getting increasingly taxed and hoping for the specific time to spend his interaction. He casts a Phantasmal Image, triggering Rhystic and not paying. The image resolves and it enters as a copy of Sarah Ascendant, and he passes the turn. Val once again loses his script roll. He plays a Cephalic Coliseum and then casts Oswald Fiddlebender. He then goes to combat and attacks Elder with Draneth. The whole table actually forgets that Elder could block Draneth, gaining one life with the Ascendant and therefore surviving combat as it becomes a 6-6 at the same time, so Elder ends up not blocking this terrible attack. Bal then passes, and on V's turn he casts a Recruiter of the Guard, triggering Rhystic and paying for it. It enters and triggers to find a Solitude for extra interaction if needed. He then attacks Elder for 4 to keep him at bay and passes. Elder gets to his turn, plays a tapped Sacred Foundry and out of better options casts a Thassa's Oracle. Rhystic triggers and he does not pay. Thoracle triggers and he looks at the top 2, putting both on bottom and passes. David jumps straight into combat, attacking V for 6 in the air, hoping to at some point bring out V's Solitude and free way for his Kinan. V takes it without a blink and David passes fully untapped. Bald's creep is helping the table to ship down his life total, so he plays a Tundra and activates Oswald right away, sacrificing the mana crypt and searching for his own Esper Sentinel. He then casts a Savin's Reclamation, targeting his Disciple of the Vault on the graveyard, returning it to play to slowly set up, and passes. We're back at V, he plays an Ancient Tomb and fearing possible endurance from the vid, he doesn't attack, and instead he casts an Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing Recruiter of the Guard as an additional cost. Rhystic and Sentinel triggers and he pays for both. It resolves and he searches for an Yasharn, Implacable Earth, entering and triggering to search for a forest and a plains. And Bal was suddenly stone rained twice. As V had other options in mind, he didn't tap his own mana confluence, ending up hindering him a bit as well. It's now Elder's turn and he's still trying to catch up to the stacking pieces. He plays a Taiga and casts Creed the Immortal, triggering and paying for Rhystic, before passing the turn. David once again draws and jumps to combat, attacking V, dreaming of player removal. No blocks are declared and the vid passes. Bal draws and plays a Sea of Clouds. After some thinking and being blocked in most of what he wants to do, he cracks his Silent Clearing to draw a card, as that he can actually perform under Yasharn's effect. 
he draws and casts a Recruiter of the Guard, triggering and searching for a spell seeker, in order to try to use another turn searching for answers before discarding two hand size and passing. V plays a Plains and casts his Paladin class, triggering Sentinel and Ristic and paying for both. He goes ahead and levels up his Paladin class to level 2, providing an Anthem to his creatures, and he then attacks the Vid for 8 before passing. Eller goes to his turn, plays an untapped Temple Garden, paying 2 and also casts a Savin's Reclamation, targeting his Esper Sentinel in the graveyard, triggering Ball Sentinel and Ristic and paying for both. He then sends his creatures towards the Vid and passes. On his end step, however, the Vid goes ahead and shows his interaction he had all along, casting Resculpt, targeting V's Collector Oof. Risty can both Sentinel's trigger and the vid pays for Ball's trigger only, letting Heller draw. He then holds up on his upkeep to cast a Noxious Revival on his Resculpt, to have the answer for Null Rod and slowly take out the hate pieces. Risty can Sentinel's trigger and he pays only one for Ball's trigger. He draws the Resculpt and passes without attacking, as V's board is becoming menacing. Ball plays an Underground Sea and casts his Spell Seeker, entering and triggering to find a Vampiric Tutor, in order to get his options open. He goes to clean up, discarding a rock and passing. V plays a forest and levels up his paladin class to level 3, just before going into combat. He sends the elemental at Elder for 5 damage and a charm at the Vid for another 5, but triggering the paladin class and giving a charm plus 1 plus 1 and double strike until end of turn. Elder doesn't block, but the Vid does throw the ascendant under the bus. I mean, the boar. V passes and on his end step, Elder casts a Source of Plushers on Ball's Dranith, paying 2 due to Paladin class and triggering Ristic and Sentinel, and only being able to pay for one of those triggers. Ball draws and then gains 1 life and Elder gets to his turn. He draws and casts his Commander on Nath right away, triggering Ristic and paying for it. It resolves, entering and drawing him a card. Unable to cast anything else from his hand, he attacks V, hoping to punch through some damage and maybe suicide his Thurkel but the table reminds V of Savin's in Elder's graveyard, so he blocks Kui and takes one before Elder passes. On his end step, however, the Vid fires his Resculpt once again, targeting Null Rod this time. Risty can both Sentinel's trigger and he can't pay. Elder draws and then Ball responds with an Entomb, triggering Elder Sentinel and not paying. He searches for his Sculpting Steel into his graveyard, and then draws two cards before the Vid gets to his turn. He plays a City of Brass and recasts his Kinan Bonder Prodigy, triggering Risty and not paying. With his whole patience, the Vid got there and now casts his Basalt Monolith. Ristic and Sentinel both trigger, but despite Ball having the Vampiric Tutor, he wouldn't be able to cast anything else, because of Ederson Canonist. The same is true for the Vid, though, so as the table passes priority, Elder responds with a Fierce Guardianship, triggering Ristic and Sentinel and paying for them, and effectively saving the table so the Vid sadly passes. On his end step, however, Ball fires his Vampiric Tutor, triggering Elder Sentinel and paying for it. He searches for a Grand Abolisher to the top, hoping to win in his next turn. However, what Bal didn't know is that Sharum was actually V's main deck a long time ago. So still in his end step, V casts his Swords Supplashers on Disciple of the Vault, triggering Ristic and both Sentinels and paying for Bal's triggers only, so he effectively ruins Bal's plans. Bal draws the Grand Abolisher but can't win now, without Disciple, so he plays his Swamp and casts an Arcane Signet, triggering Sentinel and paying for it. He then activates Cephalid Coliseum on himself, to try to dig for different outs. He draws 3 and discards 3 lands. After some pondering, he goes to clean up, discarding 3 before V's turn. V's awareness to Sharon's deck makes him go into combat right away and send Cannonies towards the Vid and the other 5-5s five towards Ball, triggering the Paladin class and giving a Sharn plus 2 plus 2 and double strike until end of turn. Ball does champ both creatures, and on V's second main phase he casts Dockside Extortionist, triggering Ristic and paying for it. It enters and creates 7 treasures before he ships it to Elder. He starts his turn with a Yavimaya Cradle of Growth, effectively reviving both unusable mana confluences. He then follows Ball's footsteps, casting Recruiter of the Guard, triggering Ristic and paying for it, and he searches for a Toski, hoping to draw into some outs or some other removal for either Swan Cannonist on his next turn, as he discards to hand size. The Vid gets to his turn and casts Mirage Mirror triggering Ristic and both Sentinels, and after some consideration, he decides not to pay. It resolves and then he passes, and on his end step, Ball activates his Academy Ruins to put Mox Diamond on top of his library. He goes to his turn, and on his upkeep, David activates Mirror's Mirror to become a copy of Ball Ristic Study, until end of turn, hopefully trying to draw some cards at last. The only player without Esper Sentinels was joked around. At this point, Ball wants to clear out V's board, but at the same time doesn't want to give the win to Elder, so he asks V if he has a way to protect the Canonist or get another Rule of Law effect on the board, and it replies affirmatively. 
This way, Ball transmutes Metal the Mixture to find the Meat Hook Massacre. He then plays a Blast Zone, entering with one counter on it, and proceeds to cast his Mox Diamond, triggering Rhystic and Sentinel, and paying for Elder Sentinel, since the vid is only with four cards in hand, and might be needed to stop Elder. He discards the Exotic Orchard to the Mox and follows it with the Meat Hook Massacre, X equals 5, triggering Rhystic and unable to pay. In response, V taps out and casts a Chord of Calling, X equals 7. Two Sentinels and two Rhystics trigger and he pays for all of them, cracking his other four treasures. Now, before you finish writing your angry comment that he couldn't crack his treasures with Yasharn, we didn't notice this until after the game, and it didn't affect that much the outcome of the game. We were playing for a little over 3 hours now, and despite of us doing a good job to keep up with the cans and cans, after 3 hours of gameplay it's still pretty hard to have everything in mind, especially through spell table. The table was unsure what he was going to find, an Elishnorn, but still Elder preferred to be safe than sorry and respond with a Flusterstorm, triggering Rhystics and Sentinel and he does pay for both Sentinel but neither Rhystic. With a new round of priority, David casts an Into the Royal on his own Kinnon, so he doesn't need to pay 6 the next time he wants to cast them. Sentinel and Rhystic trigger and he doesn't pay. Meathook finally enters, killing the opposing board, providing Baal 10 life and each of his opponents loses 2 from his own dead creatures. Baal discards 2 at cleanup and passes. On V's upkeep, he fires his Noxious Revival, targeting his Ederson Cannonist, triggering Rhystic and paying for it, which was his way to retrieve a Rule of Law effect onto the board. However, Ella responds with a hard cast Deflecting Swat, changing the target to his own Flusterstorm in his graveyard, triggering Rhystic and unable to pay. In response, however, David casts his Flusterstorm, triggering Rhystic as well and unable to pay. Yes, once again there was a slightly misplay here, as everyone forgot about Paladin class that tax his opposing spells on V's turn, and we only noticed a turn cycle later, but once again it didn't change much of the outcome of the game, as you will see. V then proceeds to draw the Canonist. He then casts his commander Arden Intrepid Archaeologist, triggering Rhystic and paying for it, and follows it with his Ederson Canonist, also paying for the Rhystic trigger and finishing his turn. Elder calls out for a lightning bolt from the top, but it is not although it serves a similar purpose. He plays a Marsh Flats and passes fully untapped. David finally finds some lands. He plays a Snow-Covered Forest and recasts his key nun, Bonder Prodigy. Bal actually misses his Rhystic Trigger as they joke around. David then follows it with an Arcane Signet, but this time Bal remembers and draws from this one, before David passes with quite some interaction. Bal gets to his turn, plays a Morphic Pool and starts by casting his Grand Abolisher. Elder calls out he's going for the win, so his only possible option is to respond with Hallbreaker Horror, and hope Ball's turn is a blank, so he can get to his turn and win by bouncing the Canonist. Rhystic triggers and he pays for it, which leaves the responsibility all to David. Without creature counter spells, he's forced to activate Kinnan in dire hopes to hit something, but he doesn't. This way, Abolisher resolves and Bob proceeds to cast his commander, Sharon the Agamon. It enters and triggers to return an artifact from his graveyard to the battlefield, and he returns Sculpting Steel, which enters as a copy of Sharum, and due to the legend rule, Bal has to choose one of the Sharums to keep and put the other on his graveyard as a state-based action, which happens before players receive priority, and therefore before triggers are put on the stack. He chooses to keep the Sculpting Steel Sharum and puts the original in his graveyard, and lets them stay there so when the new Sphinx's trigger is put on the stack, he can target the original one on the graveyard and return it to play and repeat this process. Due to the Midhook Massacre, each time this loop occurs, his opponents lose one life until death does them apart. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match everyone. First game had quite some fast hands, and turn 1 Ascendant pulled out most of Val's interaction, which slightly opened a way for David's fast hand as well, and the stacks player playing last didn't help to balance the board. Game 2 was a grind fest where Rhystic and Esper Sentinel provided a lot of cards to 3 players, while Nilrod and either Swan Cannonist slowed down the table. We couldn't close the match so soon with Paladin Class, or Elish Norn, which eventually led to another combo through Grand Abolisher's safety. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TJ Rap, Mike Burr, Ajimo, Drunken Hellscat, V, RJ, Hitachu, Pina, Ricardo, Dragonsteak, Katarina, Michael Bowen, Super Scaldi, Dog, and Wyatt, our new stack breaker. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!